on my feet for a while there. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I can't get this feeling anywhere. Mm -hmm. right. Y'all have to understand how unique this sense of worship and fellowship is. I, I can't get it anywhere else. Right so when it comes back and it hits me on the inside, there goes my little friend. That's seen me. Give God a hand so worthy. Yeah. Amen. Amen. A little cold, a little breezy, but this is all I want. I got oranges. Good to see him. He's not the church of tomorrow. He's the church of today. He's little. If not for them, there is no continuation of the ecclesia of the body of the Christ. I may be glad this morning to see you who have traversed through this inclement weather. The sun is shining, but it's cold outside. And I'm glad. I missed you last week. Miss you last week. Uh, First Lady's uh, birthday was uh, last week. And her birthday weekend. She's a Valentine's baby, so we we got away. Kind of snuck away. That's how you have to do it sometime in the church. But I hope you had a good time. I heard Andre preach. I'm looking for him today. Don't be preaching and taking off. Amen. Amen. Looking for everybody. Everybody today. Turn your neighbor, say neighbor. It's cold outside. But I'm here. Yes, sir. We give God another hand. So Amen. I want to use a memory verse this morning if you would look at one of my favorites, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning at verse 1, 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 1, amen, love the verse, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 1, <clears throat> therefore seeing that we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them who are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the glorious light of the gospel, who is the image of God, should not shine upon them. For we preach not ourselves, but Jesus Christ the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Christ's sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give us, give the knowledge of the glory of of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Yeah. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. May the Lord bless the reading of his word for the edification of our souls. Somebody say, God bless and hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Well, we better warm it up. I ain't, I ain't sweating yet. Uh, I'm not sweating just yet, but I want to bless the Lord. I want to bless the Lord. This is, a, this is the one I want to do. I want to bless him. He's been good to me. How about you? Right. Oh, good to you.
that we may give you glory, that we may give you honor, that we may give you praise. It's in the magic, the name of Jesus we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Dynasty. 
and she has MS. But her MS is in her brain. And uh, a young girl is really giving her a hard time. Now, I know that by his hand, God's hand, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I know he's a merciful God. And I want you to remember dynasty in your prayers. Now, if you think you're going to forget before you go home, then take a moment to pray for dynasty right now. Say, Lord, make her whole again. Heal her. Just make, take that time out to pray for her. Because trouble runs in the door without knocking. It's a rude intruder. I'm concerned about your family reunion or the vacation you're planning. It just busted the door down and tried to turn your joy into sorrow. But I found out joy is an inside job. The Lord gives us joy. We can make it through. Somebody give God another hand. Now by way of pastoral observation, I have to share something that maybe our population of our congregation is not aware of, but financially, again, we're in dire straits. Listen, you see what comes on Sunday morning. We can't really monitor what looks on through our Zoom and through Facebook, but we are working less than a third of our finances to stay, stay afloat. It's winter now, the gas bills are very high, for a church like this, $2,500 a month. Electric bill, $800, $900 a month. And we are really, really financially strapped. So then, we have to do another stimulus drive. Now some ask, well pastor, we just got $20,000 for the city. We couldn't spend a dime of that money on the church. You know what we did? Help people in this community keep their gas on and their water on and their lights on. That's what it was sanctioned to do. If we still had $20,000 to do whatever we wanted at Macedonia Baptist Church, I wouldn't be standing here right now asking for anything. So I got with my treasurer in the finance committee and this is what we need to do. Now the number is just what it is. We're going to need about $16,000 to really get ourselves in a place where we can cushion and move into the spring months. That's going to take quite a few people to give $400 in the next six weeks. And somebody said, oh my goodness, Pastor. Listen, I can't ask for less than what we need. What else? If I ask for less, I can't come back to it. So that's what it is. Now, regardless of what, what we think about it, that's what I'm asking God for. After we crunch the numbers, that's what we need. Now, we've only, we're April 1st, it's going to be over. We're not going to give you a long time because we need it right now. Now, I didn't like drives years ago when we used to drive and you didn't know where the end. You're just driving month after month, month after month. No, we got to put a deadline on the drive, and it's April 1st. Now, if we don't get it, it's not like after April 1st, you can't still give, but the drive is over. The drive is over. Now, this is what I know. I've been in church long enough. I've been a pastor for 34 years. Folk don't give what they can give. So you don't have to feel pressure because the amount may seem like more than you can handle, you're going to give what you can honestly give. I would pray that. But if it cannot challenge me to dummy down the amount that we need, that's what we need. That's what I'm asking God for. I don't know where. It may come from somebody other than us. That's what we need. We're going to raise it by April 1st. 
All I can ask is do what the Lord has prospered you to do. Now listen, you still got to give your time. This is over and above your time. Over and above your offering. But we're not a mega church. We don't have millionaires here. We don't have a Fortune 500 CEOs and CFOs here at Macedonia Baptist Church. We're just a small church on the east side of Akron at 940 McKinley preaching the gospel. But we're in a time. And I remember the Lord said in Philippians 4 19, but my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That's the figure. The amount is for $400 for working folk that can afford it. And we'll wait to see what the end's going to be. Somebody say amen. Amen. That is so hard for me. Y'all don't know how hard that is. He asked it, brother. That's not a, a strong point of mine. Just, ah, just wish we had a, a bunch of it, but we don't. All right. Well, let's get it. <laughs> it's giving time. It is giving time. We're going to ask the uh, deacon, uh, chairman, deacon, come and lead us to the throne of grace.
and I was going through it, you know, something like that. I'm sure you all have been, but you, you're looking for words to say. And you know, I love the Lord. I love the Lord because he took me to Isaiah 26. And he said, keep your mind staying on me. Yeah, have perfect. And have perfect peace. Yeah. And I was able to read that to my daughter. I was able to read that to my daughter, and, you know, and really uplifting her. And that's why we always got to praise the Lord. Because I know we're going to praise our way through this. And that's what we're going to do. And always remember his will is what has to be done. Whatever the situation, whatever it is, trust the Lord. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. We love the Lord. Yeah. So let's have some.
as we move right along, tell your neighbor, neighbor, I must tell Jesus. Find somebody else, say, neighbor, I must tell Jesus. Say what you will about what you believe, but when things really get tough in life, and certainly for us who are believers, that everyday common believers may not have the answer, even though we are to pray for one another and, mm -hmm. and, and to encourage one another and edify one another, there will come a time in all of our lives where all we can do is tell Jesus. Yeah. You'll steal away. Find your secret closet. Find a place where you can open up to the Lord and to let him know all about it. I've been telling Jesus since I was eight years old. I knew that the Lord, by now, as I look back over the backdrop of my own life, I knew he had his hand on me. Now, I couldn't tell it because I didn't want to, I didn't grow up wanting to be a preacher. I was too cool to be a preacher. I was. I, I wanted to be a, a group singer like the Temptations and the OJs. I wanted to be like them, you know. But God had a different story. And even at eight years old, I had learned how to pray. And then step by step, he kept me. Thank you. And I found myself Amen. always finding a spot where I could talk to Jesus yeah. about my dilemma. Yeah. This miracle that happens in Luke chapter 5 is phenomenal. Because the physician Luke says by his diagnosis that this man was full of leprosy. Leprosy was a condition feared in biblical times because at best it was incurable, but leprosy could go into remission. And the only way that you could go back home to your family, back to your job, back to your wife, back to your children, back to doing what you normally did. You had to go before the priest. He would examine you and give you a clean bill of health. Leprosy is always synonymous with sin. When we look at leprosy, in the scriptures, it is a reference to sin. And, and, and like sin, leprosy isolates. You know, sin isolates you. You get into enough sin, you won't even hang around your own family and friends anymore. It'll set you in a place which is uncommon to those who love you. I wish I had a praying church. That some of the individuals would have, would have, uh, that loved you and understood that you needed to be closer to God would have had, would have been amazed at the house you were in. Mm -hmm. Smoking crack cocaine. Mm -hmm. Doing whatever. They would have been amazed. I know my baby is not in that house. Sin isolates. Not only like leprosy, sin exposes as leprosy exposes. Because there is no way to hide what is done, what it is done to the skin and beneath the skin. Not only with leprosy do you need a dermatologist, but you need a rheumatologist because it's tissue, it's skin. So leprosy exposes, and because it affects the nerve in me. It dulls the nerve. So oftentimes a person that was a leper would have fingers missing and, 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 and limbs missing because they don't know they're in the fire. They don't know. And the nerve endings and they touch things and they get cut and they're just a mess. Very, very uh, 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 
huge ulcers break out on the skin. There's no more beauty left. It disfigures. Oh, sin disfigures. Oh, doesn't it? It disfigures. You know it does. I've seen individuals who have been athletic and strong and built from head to toe. Friends of mine beat down to nothing. Skeletal. Because sin has ran rapid in their lives. Sin, like leprosy, desensitizes. You know, leprosy desensitizes. The nerve endings are gone. And sin desensitizes. The thing that you should be feeling, you don't feel anymore. Like a, a hot iron searing your guiltiness and searing those things that would make you feel ashamed, you're no longer ashamed. The word in the, in the Bible was lascivious. You, became, you become shameless. You lose common decency. And leprosy always is synonymous to, to sin. And like sin, leprosy disables. These individuals are no longer able to work and they're ostracized. They look hideous. And they're unclean. So what they do, they quarantine them. They have to go outside the city, outside the camp, and live in leper colonies and, and away and hopefully one day uh, uh, their, their, their leprous bodies will begin to change and heal and go into remission. Other than that, they live a life ostracized and isolated and, 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 and put away in a separate camp. And it was feared, it was feared in biblical days it was, it's fear. It's fear like uh, acute uh, efficiency. Uh, what, what is it? What was AIDS? Acute. What the I stand for? Immune deficiency syndrome. Oh, it was fear, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, I hope you couldn't lose no weight. Oh my goodness, they got the AIDS. And it was fear. Oh, you remember, you remember Ebola? Oh, so fear, so contagious. It emptied our church. Man, I cannot afford to let that grab me. It is fear. It caused a sense of hysteria. It was incurable and, and often a cause of death. Now, pandemic. Not an epidemic. That's regional. A pandemic is global. Everybody catches it. You can be in Akron. You can be in Tucson. You can be in France. It doesn't matter. Russia, Germany, Australia, Poland. Anywhere there's people, you are susceptible to the disease. The disease is that contagious. And it was fear. And obviously, Minister Ron, this leper that was full of leprosy came to the end of himself and the only hope that he had is he, I must tell Jesus. I, I must tell him. And you know how we are. Can you see this hideous man full of leprosy run into a crowd when he should have been outside the city? And if he, if he even approached a person from 200 yards away, he was to yell, unclean, unclean, unclean. So he breaks the Levitical law. And runs to get to Jesus. And guess what he says? If you will, I know no. you can do it. Woo! Now, now, that's infancy faith. But it's big faith. He said, I'm not concerned about if 
if you can pull it off or not, Lord. If you'll do it, I know you can. And you know what? Smith jumping back. Oh, Lord, don't touch him. Don't touch him. He's contagious. That's how we are. I'm so glad the Lord is not like us because we won't give a fellow like that a chance. Mm -hmm. I heard a trustee say at a trustee board meeting, he had the nerve to raise his mouth and say, if I was God, I wouldn't do that. That's why you're not God. If I was God, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't give him nothing. That's exactly why you're not God. Because he looks down on the downtrodden. He looks down on the individuals that make mistakes. One right after another. Oh, he's merciful like that. He's good like that. He didn't give up on us on the tenth mistake. He still says, my son, come home. I believe the daddy for the prodigal son. Every day he was looking in the direction yeah. that his son left. One day my boy going to be coming. He'll come back home one day. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank still you. looking. That's the, that's the God we serve. We serve a forgiving God. And here he is. He rushes in the crowd. And he said, Lord, if you will, I know you can do it. Mm -hmm. You know what? <clears throat> By now, we should understand that God can do anything, anything. but fail. Yeah. Anything. You, we ought to be so encouraged. It does not matter what the trial does not matter how difficult it seems to you. I remember my brother, my youngest brother was sick. And he was on a ventilator. And it looked like he was laboring so much. He seemed like he was writhing in pain, even though, because I'm going to tell you this. Uh, let me say it. You don't want to be woke on a ventilator. Anyone that has ever had a surgery, the anesthesiologist comes in and puts you to sleep. Mm -hmm. Then they can put that tube down your throat. And then they can perform the surgery. And before you awake, if you're breathing and you're about 100% saturated with your oxygen, they remove it. Some people and all people that caught COVID, they're awake on a ventilator. I'll never forget the epidemiologist from Miami-Dade County that said, I'm hearing all these complaints about folk not wanting to wear a mask. She said, okay, but you're going to hate a ventilator. Mm -hmm. My mother was on one. And we finally had to say, okay. The doctor came in. She said, she's, she's, the ventilator is keeping her alive. But, and she, she's aware of it, but her heart won't work. And then when he finally removed it, and we prayed and removed it, he said, Pastor Larry, that, that's good. She doesn't have to feel like she's choking anymore. What? Most people awake try to pull them out. Oh, Lord, if you'll do it, I know you can make me clean. There's no doubt in my, my mind that you can fix it yeah. if you're willing to do willing. that kind of faith from a man that has been separated from his home and watching his body deteriorate. The scripture said immediately the Lord worked on him. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. And that, that, that sin that held him hostage and separated him from his home. Don't think for a moment that your sin won't separate you from your home. Your sin won't ostracize you and put you in companies that you, that you don't want to, to embrace and, 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 and put you in a situation where you're 
you're outside the camp, outside of your normal living conditions. That same leprosy, that same leprosy is how we see sin. Soul writer said, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what can make me whole again? Yeah, nothing but the blood yeah. of Jesus. Oh, how precious mm -hmm. is the flow yeah. that which makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Mm -hmm. Nothing. nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yeah. All right. So when the problem comes, mm -hmm. the songwriter said it like this. We used to sing it a long time ago because it was in the hymn. I must tell Jesus mm -hmm. all of my trials. Okay. I cannot Take these burdens alone. All right, all right. I got a call on me. Mm. And I don't know about y'all, but I don't I don't mind calling. Yeah. Come on. I, I've lived long enough to understand that calling on Jesus is a good thing. Yeah. I, I'm calling on him for number one because I know he can do it. I know. Yeah. I, I know he can he, he can do it. Uh, matter of fact, won't he do it? Won't, won't, he, won't he make a crooked way straight? Won't he turn your, your rain to sunshine? Won't he build a bridge over your troubled water? Look back over the last problem you had. Look how you got dressed up this morning and combed your hair, bought a new outfit, and now feeling better about yourself. Oh, who can fix it? I must tell Jesus all the I'm going to tell him now. Don't try to stop me. I'm going to run to him. He has the antidote. He has the cure for what else my condition. He can clear up the sin. He's better than clear a seal. He heals. He doesn't treat symptoms. He administers a cure. Oh, I wish I had somebody that would testify I used to be ostracized. I used to be dislocated with the folk I hung around. I used to be I used to be disabled. Geeked out of my mind on some type of drug or, or letting sin run rapid in my life to where I became desensitized and things that I should have been ashamed of. I wasn't ashamed no more. I didn't care who seen me. I had to get what I was going after. I had to had to get it because sin untreated becomes worse and worse. And after worse, it becomes perverted. And after perverted, it becomes sick. There needs to be some surgery. You need to call a doctor. You need to see somebody that has the medicine that can clean you up and make you whole again. You yeah. gotta call on somebody. And in that doctor field, you gotta call on somebody that really has the cure. His name yeah. is Jesus. Jesus is the Savior. If you call me, he'll show up. Whosoever call upon the Lord shall be saved. I'm glad about it, God. I'm glad about it. I'm glad about it. I watched him in 34 years of ministry clean up folk that other folk thought they'd never get any better. They washed them clean as snow. I watched him clean some folk up. Now they're profitable to the ministry. Oh, you better not sit back and listen to their testimony. Oh, God brought me from a mighty home. Thank you, Lord. Me up. Thank you. Remember, nothing valuable could stay. Everything had to get sold. Not only their stuff, but your stuff. Mm. Sell it. Because 
it was sin, sin. The Lord comes with a remedy yeah. for sin. Yeah. If your life is leprous, Jesus is the cure. Yeah. Fall down on your knees and declare, I must tell Jesus yeah. all about it, not your neighbor. There's a current comes a time, not your pastor, not your best friend, not your husband, not your wife. You gotta tell Jesus. And then Jesus will give you a proper relationship with your wife, with your husband, with your friends, with your mama, with your daddy. I know a young lady that struggled for a long time. And the Lord kept her mama alive long enough for her to see her clean, cleaned up. And as soon as she was cleaned up, she said, Lord, I'm ready to go home now. Because sin not only affects you, but it affects the people that love you the most. They don't go to sleep right away. Because they toss and turn about you. Somebody pray for me. Yeah. And had me on the yeah. Took Thank the time. You. Thank you. Pray for me. Thank I you. must tell Jesus. Door for the church. Of
always know what to do if I could come fellowship and worship with Christians. Yeah. We have, we might disagree with politics. Some of y'all might feel like Cincinnati should have won the Super Bowl. But when it comes to Jesus, Jesus. we all say the same thing. He's my rock, my soul, my shield. He's my wheel in the middle. Somebody say hello. 